Pay close attention. What you're seeing today is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to YPN News, bringing you the news, showing the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Catan, no surprise this week, but more proof exposing the darkness in the Catholic Church. And dark it is, Jeff. According to a recent report by an independent commission, tens of thousands of children have suffered sexual abuse in Dutch Catholic institutions. More than a thousand reports of these abuse cases have come in from Catholic schools, seminaries, and orphanages. The report found that church officials failed to adequately deal with the abuse as well as help the victims. Now, this report dates back as far as 66 years ago to 1945 and unveils that about 20% of children who spent time in some kind of Catholic institution suffered some kind of abuse. So far, around 800 alleged offenders have been identified among who of all else, the Catholic clergy. Now, the Catholic Church has agreed to this investigation as a means to try to clean the slate, and the Church has also recently set up a compensation system for the victims, and payouts would be made according to the severity of the abuse, ranging from $6,500 to $130,000. Of course, Jeff, no amount of money can restore the sense of security, the peace of mind, and innocence of childhood that a person should have, and that, of course, is now lost. Right. Now, with over a billion people in the uh, Catholic, Catholic institution, uh, cases like these, they definitely get a lot of attention, that's for sure. Right, but I understand, Catan, that that number of the Catholics is diminishing greatly with it, all these scandals uh, being brought to light. It is, and it has been for quite some time. Now, for decades, sexual abuse by the Roman Catholic clergy was a crime that left its victims suffering in silence. Victims like Tom Lear School, who was left isolated, forced to bear the shame of his abuser's crime. Now, in an interview with Al Jazeera, Tom stated, it started when I was 13 and don't exactly know when it stopped, but it must have been around 14 somewhere. Now, he was a priest, Tom went on to say, basically the educator, the coach, the father, the representative father, basically in the group that I was in. The fact that I knew it was wrong, this should not be happening with that priest who was on Sunday preaching in the church, and when the lights went out, he would come and do things with me, Tom said, that I knew were not right. Even as a 13-year-old, I knew it was not right. Now, in an attempt to find a way to deal with the past, Tom has set up a network of survivors who also suffered abuse by church figures. It's one way that he has tried to cope with the past by letting others also others who also live with the torment of abuse feel that they are not alone. Now, Catan, last year he even took his fight to Rome in, in hope of some form of recognition of the crimes by members of the Catholic Church. Now, it's believed that there are nearly 2,000 reports of sexual abuse by Roman Catholic clerics in the Netherlands. Now, that's, second, that's the second worst case in the world next to Ireland. Even though Dutch bishops have already agreed to pay compensation to the victims of those who have suffered sexual abuse at the hands of Roman Catholic priests, many say that it's simply too little, too late, and that the church needs to fully address the system of abuse that occurred to those who were left in its care. The church continues to hold significant influence in the Netherlands. Roman Catholics are the largest religious group in the country, but the church attendance has dropped significantly since the 1970s. Now, many left appalled and feeling betrayed by the Catholic Church because of these scandals. A spokesman for the Verge University of Amsterdam told Al Jazeera that the Catholic Church has undermined the trust the people would have in the church both inside and out. And as the church is still claiming the moral high ground of knowing what's best for society, basically expecting people to believe that and to accept that it's become more and more a difficult story. Now, Catan, people are starting to realize that they've inherited nothing but lies from the Catholic Church and seeing that those who are supposed to be teaching morality 
are the very ones that need to learn it the most. That's absolutely right. In fact, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, now I don't know if you've heard about that, but that is a United States federal law that has been enacted for the past 48 years uh, to specify the budget and expenditures of the United States Department of Defense. In a recent vote for the fiscal year of 2012 for the NDAA, the Senate passed a 97 to 3 vote approving expenditures, amendments, and other activities for the United States military. Among many of those hundreds of provisions stuck into the bill were two things in particular. One was repealing the bill against sodomy and the other repealing the bill against bestiality. So now they're actually legalizing that in the military. Making it absolutely legal, decriminalizing it in fact. The bill still has to go through, of course, the House and it has to be signed into law by the president. And in a recent White House briefing, when asked, <clears throat> asked about the bill, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney laughingly made light of the subject and avoided answering the question altogether. But as of now, it's on its way to becoming a law. And really what we're seeing here, Jeff, is a public admittal and acceptance of this sodomite way of life that has been going on for years. Well, Katan, we now have another scandal at another university. This time, Florida A&M, where medical examiners ruled that the death of a member of the marching band was a homicide, a homicide by hazing. In November, a healthy 26-year-old college band drum major, Robert Champion, died within an hour after he was hazed on a band bus. The report revealed Champion had extensive contusions of his chest, arm, shoulder, and back, and blood force trauma from his hazing attack that made his body hemorrhage and go into shock. He bled to death internally. Ruling his death a homicide means that his hazers could be charged with murder. Now, Pam Champion, Robert's mother, told CBS News, you just kind of wonder what kind of people are these people that are doing this? Pam and Robert Champion Sr., the drum major's parents, have been demanding full prosecution to send a clear message about hazing. The one that put his hand on him, Robert's father said, that did the beating should be dealt with harshly. Now, Champion's death has placed the spotlight on a 40-year history of hazing within Florida A&M's famed marching band. Now, physical abuse included beatings, beatings with fists and objects were all part of initiations into the band's subcultures that even the band's director, Dr. Julian White, uh, related to or compared to gangs. Mm. Now, he says that band members told him right after the attack that a number of them had repeatedly punched Champion in a hazing ritual. When asked by CBN News correspondent Mark Strassman, did he run a gauntlet on the bus? Dr. White replied, that's what I'm told. The initiation was running the gauntlet from the front of the bus to the back of the bus. On Monday, the school's board of trustees will vote whether to suspend school president, Dr. James Ammons. Now, hundreds of students there have been demonstrating for Ammons to stay, but the, vote, but the vote comes as a hazing death has turned into a homicide investigation. Hmm. As we continue, we'll turn it over to our field correspondent, Larry McGee, on the continuance of this violence, Jeff, that we're seeing taking place throughout the world right now. Larry? Thanks, Katan. On what appeared to be a nice sunny day in Seattle, Washington, one pedestrian, apparently out for a leisurely stroll, had her walk disrupted by the horrifying sight of a police officer gunning down a civilian in cold blood. Videotape of the event shows John Williams, a Native American woodcarver crossing an intersection with a piece of wood and knife in hand. The video then shows a police officer trailing Williams with a brazen swagger more reminiscent of a street thug hey. than an officer of peace. Hey. After hey. ordering Mr. Put Williams to drop his carving instrument and down. not receiving Put an acceptable response down. fast enough to suit his taste, the police officer then began to fire incessantly into the shocked frame of Mr. Williams, shooting him not just once, but five times. The shooting was ultimately found to be unjustified, and amid the ensuing controversy, the officer in question later voluntarily resigned. For those keeping tabs on the city, however, the unwarranted shooting and death of Mr. Williams represents yet another example of the flawed approach of military-style police training, which equips officers with the might to fight, yet not the wits to reason. Katan, back to you and Jeff at YPN. Hmm. Wow. 
Very interesting. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, it's that system that's teaching bullying and that violence, it's really increasing. Well, stay tuned to hear Yisrael Hawkins explaining Bible prophecy as it's being fulfilled. I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thanks for watching.